guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be chit chatting a bit about the Good and the Beautiful curriculum, more specifically their language arts program, and even more specifically the pre K and the kinder version of their language arts program. I started things off with a quick or not so quick Q&A video um, where I just go and kind of address some of the frequently asked questions that I get about the curriculum um, and if you haven't seen that video I can link it up here and put it in the description box below for you to check that out. I'm going to be chit chatting like I said about the language arts program or specifically what I'm using for my daughter who is four years old. She is turning five in just a few weeks actually um, but we use both the pre-k program and the kinder program. Um, so I'm just going to kind of go through the curriculum and show you a little bit of what is inside and then also chit chat about how we're using it and how it is working out for us. First things first, we love the program. It fits exactly into what I had in mind for adding more um, prepared curriculum into our mix in homeschool. Um, if you don't already know we are getting ready to go into our sixth year of homeschooling and this is the first time that we would actually be implementing prepared curriculum um, I, I've tried it once before like I mentioned in my Q&A video and it didn't work out so well so there were very specific things that I was looking for in adding curriculum and the good and the beautiful has addressed every one of those things so hopefully I can share with you why they have met my needs in this area. One of the things that caused me the biggest frustration in homeschool is trying to settle in on a grade level. Um, that was such a challenge. It has been such a challenge for me and The Good and the Beautiful has been a major um, point of finding a solution in that area. Did that make sense? Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. So now that we've had it for quite some time, I've been able to just kind of slowly add it to the way that we do things and really get a nice authentic feel for how it's fitting into how we do homeschool. So um, like I said, tracking back, <laughs> and one of the biggest issues that I had in homeschool was trying to figure out level, grade level, and that type of thing. It was a challenge for me because I have um, one child who is a bit more advanced um, in how he picks things up. So trying to find material that challenged him but still taught him at his level was really a big deal for me. On their website, they offer a free download of their language arts curriculum from grade one through five, I believe that is, which is incredible. It's amazing because it gives you an opportunity to really, honestly, try out their program and see how it might fit into your homeschool. What that did for me was allow me to try out more than one level to see the differences between the levels and how the um, how the curriculum progressed as the years went on. I think this is of exceptional value. Is that the right way to say it? No, seriously. I think this is a really huge value because when you go to purchase curriculum you normally um, try to figure out what grade level that child is going to be on you purchase that grade level and then you kind of feel committed to staying right where you are because you've paid your money you know you paid your coins for this you know <laughs> but for the good and the beautiful you're able to go in and download it and try it out and get a feel for the different levels to really make a better decision about where you should start and um, and how you would progress through the program I I don't know I can't say enough about it but it's really such a valuable um, um, a, a valuable option that they've given to you to be able to really dive in there and figure that whole thing out before you commit before you completely commit to the um, curriculum so 
I said all that to say that having the ability to toggle between the levels was huge for me. If you followed me for any bit of time, then you might have remembered that what I really like to use in our homeschool is stretch material. So we have our basic foundational um, curriculum that we work our way through, but I love throwing in stretch material. And basically, it's just challenging curriculum bits that I like to throw into the mix. And I like to do that, obviously, to challenge my kids, but more so than that, to challenge myself. I think that for me, homeschooling has been so much about learning what their minds, their tiny little minds, are capable of. Um, yeah, I just think that overall, I. I have a tendency to underestimate them based upon their age. And that is a huge, that's been a huge lesson for me in homeschool. Yeah, that these kids with these so-called tiny minds actually are blowing my mind away with what they are capable of. So that is why I like to include stretch material as much as possible. And the Good and the Beautiful's curriculum has been hands down um, a huge resource for giving me the tools. Did I like say too much there? I probably used too many words, but basically <laughs> it's given me a tool that I can use to constantly um, provide stretch material to them in a very easy way. And how I do that is by using two grade levels, um, or not grades, but two levels um, in the language arts department. So I do this for both my daughter and both of my sons. So yeah, I choose the level that we are going to use as our base that we're gonna work our way through for that school year. Um, but then I also choose a level up that is going to provide stretch material for us. Um, and so that's why I am chit-chatting about the two levels. Um, we This is what we used this past year and we're getting ready to move on to the next um, phase as we enter the next year of homeschool. But what we used for this previous year was both the pre-K program as well as the level K program. So kind of sort of the pre-K was her base and the kinder was her stretch material. So when you get the pre-K pack it comes with the course book, the activity packet, and the, um, the letter flip books. It's nice and simple. Another pro for me is that there's not too many pieces. Um, I found that in searching for curriculum in the past, there are too many parts for me and it's not as straightforward and simple. What I love about The Good and the Beautiful is that the price point is incredible. So what I would suggest or how I use it is I like to have the physical set as well as the downloaded version because that is how we complete most of our curriculum is using our iPads, so digitally. I do this and I've been trying to um, create a habit of doing it because it is our dream as a homeschooling family to travel more and be on the go more and I think that just getting us into that rhythm of using our digital our devices more in completing our work will be beneficial to us in the future. So that's why I do that. I never have to be concerned with whether or not I left a course book at home and I don't have to be bound to my homeschool room and my home in order to complete our lessons. So I'm getting us in the habit of that now, which is why I do lots of things digitally just in case you're new to this channel and you don't you know know too much about how we do school so a major bonus for me is the fact that they offer pretty much all of their curriculum in PDF format and I don't know if I can stress this quite enough but that is a major deal in my book I feel like it sends a message to me of how much they believe in their program and how it can change and help the lives of other homeschool families because you know I'm gonna be honest I don't even I don't even really know how um, how they are doing it keeping 
their curriculum as such a low cost and then offering also the PDF versions. I don't think you guys really understand how big it is to have the PDF form of the curriculum. If you find that this curriculum works for you, what that means is if I'm using level two for my son, I can then print out another um, copy to use for my daughter when she gets to that age. That is a major deal in my book and why I consider this a forever curriculum. They have added so much value to the program for our homeschooling families by just simply offering it as a downloadable um, product as well as the physical form. I don't think, okay, I understand the value, so I'm hoping that you understand that value too. It's really a big deal in my book, but um, for the physical course set plus the download, it is $40 for the pre-K program. Now, I don't normally, I'm not a huge fan of pre-K programs, let me throw that out there, because there's so much, I'm a big believer in the fact that there's so much for um, for you to learn just naturally on your own without needing any type of program for pre-k, um, preschool, pre-k, and even kinder for that matter. There's so much stuff that you just naturally um, inhale when they are that small. So I'm not an, a huge advocate of actually having a program for that age. With that being said, I am really glad that I got the opportunity to um, to check this curriculum out at this age because it has added quite a bit to our homeschool. And I let me tell you this, if I had found this curriculum back when I just had my son, I would definitely have purchased it because it, like I said it's nice and simple it doesn't come with too many pieces and it's very easy to follow um, and then I could also use it again once I had my youngest son and then again once I had my daughter so I would have had a huge value out of purchasing the program for $40 with the downloadable version included and then been able to use it for all three of my children. That adds a lot of value to your homeschool, especially if you have multiple children back to back like I did. Another thing I really love about the simplicity of their curriculum is that like I said, all the meat is there. Um, it's very easy to follow. Um, without needing too many bits and pieces. And that's a lot of the issue I had with other curriculum is that they included a lot in their um, programs, a lot of bit and bits and pieces and prepared activities and things like that. And while I believe that probably adds a lot of value to a lot of homeschooling families. For me, in our creative homeschool, it was too much for me because I wanted to have a curriculum that was nice and simple as a foundation, but I still had lots of freedom to add all of my creative bits to the mix. Um, but I, as I mentioned, I had tried one other curriculum in the past and that was a major problem for me. When you know that you've spent um, upwards of $600 on one grade of curriculum, you feel really bad um, not using certain pieces of the curriculum or um, trying to spend additional monies to add certain things that you want to throw into the mix. With this curriculum, I don't feel bad at all, okay? <laughs> I make my little Amazon purchases, add my own little activities. Um, when I don't follow the curriculum to the T, I don't feel bad because I know that I did not invest a ton of money into this curriculum, which then gave me the pressures to follow it to a T. And it didn't leave me any additional monies on the outside to buy all those little bits and pieces or that trip to the um, that field trip that you wanted to take or um, that extra kit, that butterfly kit that you wanted to buy off of Amazon because you feel like you're obligated to completing all of the activities and bits and pieces inside of the curriculum that you purchased. You know, so 
that is a major bonus for me it just gave me enough of a foundation and like I said it is all the meat is there for the curriculum but um, what I was looking for was just basic foundational curriculum um, that I could use when I'm not you know on my creative homeschool mom a game or when I am sick and I need something that is very easy to um, stand in the gap for my husband to take over for a day or two uh, and not need a lot of instruction for me and so for me those are like major deals with this curriculum I'm getting rambly but hopefully I'm not quite as rambly with the future videos I just wanted to kind of give you more of a feel for why um, I really enjoy the curriculum. Like I said, you have the course book for pre-K, you have the activity packet, and then you have the letter flip book. So we've been using the activity packet and the letter flip book um, as we see fit. I do kind of, you know, I mean, if I had to have any other thoughts about it, I would like to see maybe the flip book in a, a thicker, um, quality like I don't know cardboard slash whiteboard type of feel to make it a little bit more durable for that age um, and then maybe the same thing with the uh, pieces in the activity pack um, on the other end I'm really kind of glad that they're just nice and simple because it lowers the cost for the program and um, you know we don't use them enough to feel like we have to have a better day, a better quality um, for the bits and pieces there. We use the flip books quite creatively. Um, a lot of times she matches the uppercase, the lowercase, and the photo, and then I'll have her um, use her letter tiles to spell out words. Um, so sometimes she'll use the peanuts in the peanut game and if she matches the uppercase C with the lowercase C then we'll take it a step further and have her spell words that start with the letter C like cute. Um, so we found some really fun creative ways to use those pieces a little bit more than um, what is laid out in the course. Another thing I was thinking was that you know now that we've kind of moved past that you know this level I could cut off the letters from the flip book and the characters and then run them through the laminator and that will make it so that I can use it for all different types of things that we might want to use it for. Yeah, they add value. We don't use them a ton, but they're nice little bits and pieces to throw into their bin so that when she comes to me and says, what do I do, mommy? She can go pick some items out of her bin to kind of play some of those games. So that we just kind of throw in there with some other stuff that she has. Okay, so at the front of the course, I mean, they really cover a lot of the information and questions that you would have concerning the course. So I would, I would definitely suggest that you take a look at all of the information they have in the front of the course books. Um, they'll tell you what's included. Um, they will answer tons of frequently asked questions like what age should my child start this course? Um, uh, how to get started. They lay it out completely how to get started. I found that it is the easiest thing to just kind of jump into even if you're do not doing it exactly as they directed. It's really easy to just kind of jump in and get started. Um, they do have a list of all the extra items that you need to complete the course book. I ended up having everything that was on here already so I did not have to go out and purchase anything. However, what I would suggest is when you look at the extra items that are needed, whether it's in the language arts um, level pre-K or K or any other level, just take a trip, a shopping trip, grab the items, put them in a bin so you always know that you have what you need to complete the lessons that you are on. Um, then they address how you should, the frequency in which they suggest you do the lessons. So I get that quite a bit too. How often are you doing lessons? So we do them definitely different from what is recommended, but they lay it out for you here. What I love about the Good and the Beautiful curriculum is the rhythm. Um, 
I love the rhythm in which they address the lessons. I feel like there's so much more there to learn about how to be a teacher to your children and to teach with a gentle disposition. I really, I feel like that really added value to me. I know that most people are looking for, you know, what is it teaching my child? But I feel like, um, I feel like all of the curriculum that I have gotten, you guys know that the scripts are one of my favorite, the talking points that they um, write out and you are to read to your child, they are one of my favorites. Um, they very much so remind me of my general conversations with the kids, but for me, having them inside of this curriculum helps to reinforce um, that tone, that gentleness that I want to always speak to my children in and I don't know I know this might not matter to anybody else but I feel like as a homeschool teacher there's no like real class that we go through um, I mean I guess you could go to conferences and things like that but in general there's no real class we go to uh, through that you know really helps us along the way there are books that we can read but you know finding time to read the books, you know, that can be a challenge sometimes, especially if you have other things going on like we do in our household. So I feel like for me, the Good and the Beautiful's curriculum has been great for my kids, but it's really been great for me as a homeschool mom, just kind of reinforcing that gentle rhythm and spirit that I want to have when I'm teaching my kids. And that's really helpful to me because your girl be tired. I, <laughs> I have a lot going on and a lot that I want um, to accomplish and do for the kingdom in the kingdom with my home, all that other jazz. And my, uh, my flesh is in the way often, you know, and I get frustrated and I get tired. And so I feel like, I don't know, I feel like having the scripts in the Get Me Beautiful have been like a little bit of a mentor or a coach to me just kind of reminding me um, when I'm super tired and I don't have my mommy soft gentle spirit teacher voice on I can just read through this and kind of maintain that same rhythm and that same reminder to keep the gentle spirit and to keep that patience and that kindness and I really appreciate that because I'm a first I am a first generation homeschool mom, you know what I mean? I don't know what I'm doing. So I appreciate any um, suggestion and encouragement and guidance that I can get from other homeschool moms that have been there and are, have learned those lessons and are ready to share. And I know this is getting super chatty, but I told you it was going to be chatty anyway. <laughs> so I really appreciate that. and. I don't know, maybe you don't gather that from looking at the curriculum, but I think that those were the things that I was looking for, so those were the things that I found. Um, I am not as concerned with the, I don't know, what's the word, rigorousness? That's not the word, but you know what I'm trying to say. I am not too concerned with the complexity of the information that's inside of the courses, um, because because we have such an eclectic way of learning, I'm not looking for an end-all, be-all curriculum. I'm just looking for a basic foundational guide for me, and then I can take it from there. So I'm not really looking for something to teach my child. I'm looking for something to help me to teach my child better. Um, and for me, The Good and the Beautiful has been super helpful, you know, for doing that, for giving me the tools and just that good jumping point to do that. And hopefully that doesn't sound too extra, too extra, but it is the truth. So I'm giving you my, my thoughts, okay? So um, it, when they addressed whether or not you should do one lesson each day, the first thing they say is the number of lessons completed and time spent with child each day depends completely upon the child. Okay, that is golden bits of information. I feel like there is wisdom all throughout their curriculum because that is so true. Um, there is a general recommendation that they can give for how you should start things out. And I think that you should try and 
start off by following that. But I think it's always best to pay attention to the rhythm of their homeschool and the way that you guys teach and the way that each child learns and then from there take notes. I've mentioned this before that the biggest help to me in homeschool is taking notes and journaling because then it helps me to focus on what actually works for us instead of hearing all the voices of what works for other people over what is really working for us in our homeschool. So I feel like there's wisdom right there, you know, you have to do what's best for you and your family and you can't figure that out if you're not doing something to set those things before you, if that makes sense. So yeah, Savannah's been breezing through, she breezed through this program and what I really like is that um, we are still doing it, uh, we just go back through it again print out the pages again and it gives her something extra to do. Um, more than anything, she likes that time that she gets to spend with me um, and the fact that she's so confident in the information, like this is well below what um, she is currently working on, but the repetition is everything for us at least. Um, and then she takes on this, you know, I'm the teacher, you're the student mommy type of deal and so this is just something really simple that we can do together that doesn't take too much time it's not too complicated so I really enjoyed this program oh yeah I was going to address how often we do lessons so actually we do not do it every day what we generally do is um, I ran into a challenge because I felt like my attention was constantly divided in homeschool. So what we do in our schedule is each of the kids has a specific day that is dedicated to them. So we go along with our regular schedule, but they know that that is their special day where they will get mommy's most of mommy's attention in their learning endeavors. So um, I, I generally have you know things laid out that the other children can do independently and require a little bit less of mommy's attention during these days. So my oldest, who is my third grader, he gets two days out of our school week um, because he's older and he needs more of me um, to kind of explain things and go through things and blah, 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 blah. Uh, my two younger children, they each get a day. So for my four-year-old, Savannah, she gets a day and her day is on Wednesday. Um, and so on Wednesday is Savannah's day. Everybody is aware I've set up that clear expectation and we go about our school day, but most of my attentions are focused on her. And they really get a kick out of having a day just for them, which is really nice. It's like them and mommy time but in school time so it's working out really well let me get back to the point so the point is um, because I have that day where I am really really focusing in on her we don't stop with just one lesson we generally breeze through several lessons on her day and it's really easy to do because the work is easy to get through um, using both the pre-k and the kinder so we do um, a few, quite a few lessons from pre-k say we do um, three or four lessons from pre-k and maybe one or two lessons from kinder it just kind of depends and we do all of those lessons in that time frame and then that's when mommy's little journaling homeschool journaling slash planning time comes in because each day that we address certain lessons I write down all of our ideas so we come up with ideas together on different games that we could play and different things that we could do to reinforce the lessons that we have covered on her day um, and then throughout the rest of the week up until her next day we implement those activities if that makes any sense but it really works for us because um, it just gives us some extra reinforcement and practice but it just gives us something to really focus on it's really helped me because I am giving her that day that's like dedicated to her when I get to the other days when I have to spend my time with um, the boys I don't feel so bad 
you know I know that I pretty much spent my nice chunk of quality time learning and then we've set out our activities and she kind of has her permissions to go off and do that type that practice that we chatted about on her day so um, for instance, if we covered a certain set of spelling words and she's learned to identify the vowels, all throughout the rest of the week, she'll then come and say, Mommy, we did this. So she's doing those same activities, but she's doing them over and over again and independently. So it really gives her confidence, but it also takes the pressure off of me knowing that I've given her her wings to fly for the week. And now I have my freedoms to be able to focus on the boys. So that's really helpful for me in having a dedicated day for each of them. And that is how we kind of work our way through our lessons. So no, we do not do lessons one a day. We generally work our way through several lessons on her spe specified day of the week um, where she gets mommy, you know, her little dedicated mommy day for school. So that's how we do that. Okay, this is getting super chatty, but I'm sorry. I'm going to try to have time stamps so that you can kind of work your way to the part that you're most interested in, just in case this video ends up super long, which I think it is. That is the pre-K program. Now I am going to chit-chat about the kinder program. Like I said, we were using the kinder program as stretch material while she was working her way through the pre-K program. Um, we are starting this year out using the kinder program again as our foundational material and then using the level one as our stretch material. You get what I'm saying? Okay. And I know it sounds complicated, but it's actually not complicated. It actually works out super well. Now in the level K program, you get the course book, the level K reader, the flip books. I think there's 30 books inside of this flipbook packet and then the phonics cards so it starts with the level K at a glance so they just kind of they'll go through everything they're going to cover inside of the course book so phonics and reading B and D recognition it'll tell you everything that is included inside of the course um, I, what I like about this just having this right here is that that helps me to identify the different sections that I can pull from so when they are curious about certain things or certain topics come up um, I kind of abandon all other plans to pay attention to what sparks their interest the most or what they have taken notice of so having like something like this a level at a glance helps me to identify the different sections um, that I can pull from within my materials my resources and I hope that wasn't too confusing but it's it's the truth <laughs> it is actually how I use it it sounded quite complicated but it's really super easy um, if we end up stumbling upon synonyms and I quickly explain to them synonyms then I go and grab my course book and see what I have inside of my course book that pertains to synonyms. I just try to take advantage of those natural curiosities over what our scheduled um, curriculum lays out. So I hope that makes sense. So if you go a little bit further, it'll tell you the things that they're going to work on during the course um, with the phonics cards, the sight words, um, the spelling words and the poetry memorization. Now how we use the program is they basically have the same type of flow throughout the different levels. Um, I don't use them as they lay them out in the course books. I just use them separately. What I love again is how for me it just teaches me um, different things to pull out in our natural everyday. So I don't necessarily go along with what the plans are but I use the structure and for me that's invaluable um, after that they lay out the lessons which again helps me to identify the different sections that I want to pull out and use separately which is normally how I do it what I mean <laughs> so for lesson one is vowels and consonants lesson two is poetry I like how they've included the different bits into the program however I found that having them scattered about wasn't helpful to how we schedule our days and our lessons so what I did was I pulled those things out 
So instead of the, allowing them to kind of naturally flow the way they have set them out, I just pull that whole course out and use it separately. So all of the areas that it tells you there is poetry, I pull out like um, there's poetry in lesson two, there's poetry in lesson nine, and I pull those out and kind of create my own little mini lesson book. Now, I do lose a little bit in the sense that it's designed to go with their natural flow of information. So something that is referenced inside of the poetry in lesson two might have come from the lesson before it. So you lose a little bit there, but I found that it's been really easy for me to adapt and to make up for what I lost by not doing it in order, if that makes sense. Um, so they just lay out the lessons and they'll also prompt you when it's time to start the reader. So after you finish lesson 12, you um, it says start section one of the level K reader. Now, I don't know if I mentioned this before, so I'll mention it again just in case I didn't mention it before. But how we use the level K reader is not how they list it inside of the curriculum. What I like is they've made it such that it's really easy for you to adapt it and use it the way that best fits for you. But at the same time, you can also just follow the plan. And I do both. I mostly use it the way that best fits us, but then I always go back to using it the way that they laid it out whenever I'm having difficult times in life. So if I have a lot of work going on, um, or if I am not feeling well, or if we are out of town quite a bit and just thrown a bit off of our schedule, if I'm not feeling as creative, then I can always default back to the way that they have laid out the program and not be too fancy with it. So um, another thing that I that you get inside of these this curriculum kit is the mini books. I really like the mini books. They're nice, short and sweet and simple, super easy for her to be able to read through and they're fun little stories. Um, they have prompts for when you would read certain mini books inside of the curriculum. Like I said, I don't use it necessarily in that way. Um, well, I don't get the most use out of it in that way. When it does come up inside of the curriculum, we do pull out that book. But at the same time, it's kind of the same way that I approach reading our library picks. Um, I don't just make them wait until the time is allotted for them to read a certain book. I let them just kind of like have at it and explore them. And then when we get to them, they're already familiar with them. I kind of do the same thing with the mini books. Um, they're cute. Like I said, short and sweet, short and sweet little stories. I have found that they have really been fitting in naturally with a lot of the things that we've been doing. Um, you guys know that we are just working on our arthropod unit, and it just so happens that, let me see if I can find it. We're working on our arthropod unit, and they have a little mini book in here about bugs. So I was able to pull that mini book out and use that as a focus when we first introduced our arthropod unit. Um, if we are going over telling time, um, I was able to pick out the clocks book. So I just found, oh here it is, the small things. So I just found that I'm able to kind of use them in many different ways. So I like these little books. They're super cute. Um, then they have the phonics cards and they tell you how to use them. Uh, basically, there, there are these cards and they tell you to put them inside of Ziploc bags and separate them between the ones they are learning, the one they mastered, the ones that they mastered, and the ones that they are not that they have not learned yet. Um, I think it's a great way. Like I said, it's a nice starting point. We don't use them in that way. We use them slightly more creatively. And that's really just because I found that if there were too many things for me to adhere to, I get frustrated. <laughs> so I just grabbed the resources, I read through the instructions to get a feel for what the point was, and then I just slide it in the best way that I know how. So I just try to make sure that we are picking the cards up maybe once or twice a week, and then we just use them in different ways. We use them um, to spell, they quiz each other using them. Um, I use a lot of the suggestions from inside of the 
curriculum, but just maybe not so much in that way um, or at those times. And I think that's perfectly fine to make a curriculum your own um, because really the more you are comfortable and excited about the curriculum, the more likely you are to make progress. Whenever I'm trying to adhere to specific instructions, say for instance inside of curriculum, I get really frustrated. If I'm frustrated, I am less likely to teach well. If I'm less likely to teach well, we are less likely to be productive and progress. And so I aim for progress over completion or perfection um, or getting every box checked off nicely. That is just what works best for me. So they have suggestions in here on how you should teach every day. It will lay out um, just their suggestions on, on how you can get started. It says to work on the course one-on-one -on -one with the child for 20 to 30 minutes. Um, work on the cell, uh, spelling, sight words, and phonics cards each day for an additional five to ten minutes. I started off following their recommendations and then I just took note of our natural rhythms and what was important to me and what wasn't. The reason why that was okay for me is because some of these things I really didn't need to address. We had a really good method for handling spelling. Um, we had a really good method for addressing our sight words and things like that. So these are things that I just didn't need to use them the way that they laid out but I would suggest you start using them the way that they have recommended them just so you can get a feel for it and then decide which ways work best for you so I do know that there is a checklist that they include for you to cover the things that you would that they've recommended that you complete in a day so when I use the curriculum as more of like a substitute plan if I'm not feeling well or I'm out of town or something like that then it's re really easy to just adapt that checklist and let whomever is fitting in filling in for me just kind of go through the checklist and get that stuff done there so I don't know it works for us Okay, now they do have um, a little note in here about not rushing or skipping lessons. Um, they talk about repetition and review and how they're vital parts of learning, and I agree with all of that. I really, really do. However, we do skip lessons. <laughs> we skip lessons because it is the way that fits best for how we do school. And like I said, I follow our natural, our laid out curriculum. Um, based off of what I created for our family and then I just use the different parts of this curriculum to kind of like interject into those spots and those spaces works really well for me so in the very beginning of the course they have um, an assessment you can go in and just administer the assessment just as they have um, laid out for you they do cute little things like um, when they lay out the sight words there is a picture and every time they um, complete complete a sight word section they get to color part of the picture as you can see we only colored that one part because I quickly realized that I just I couldn't be held accountable for finishing this activity <laughs> also uh, like I said sight words and spelling words was something we had a really good grasp on so I found that I really didn't need to use this yeah, so however, if I'm having an off day, then I just default right back to what their laid out plan is, and I know that I'm getting something accomplished. <laughs> they have really good instructions, though, so um, as far as the sight word section is concerned, they say have the child practice one to two charts each day. Once a chart is mastered, then, um, and they they let you know what mastered is. The child can read all the words on that chart the first time without hesitation for three days in a row. Then check the mastered box and let the child color the specified item on the picture below. And then once a week, review all the mastered charts. It's helpful to choose the same day of the week, such as a Monday or Friday, to be your review day. Yeah, so I think that what I gathered the most from this was that number one, consistency is like key. And then also laying out good expectations for them is helpful so you guys are on the same page. Like they're learning, you're learning, you're teaching, you know, they're teaching you about them. And so expectations are really important. Um, so yeah, these are just the ladders and we just kind of go through them just to make sure that she just kind of has a review. She already knew them, but what I used 
was the same method as a guide and I just added on new words. So then they do the same thing with the spelling words. They lay out how you are to approach the spelling words. Again, like I said, I did not have an issue in this area and I was perfectly fine with the way we were doing spelling um, to begin with. So I really didn't adapt too much of this, but this is really nice instruction. The next section is the poetry memorization. Again, we don't use this to the T, but I use it as a guide for how to approach poetry memorization memorization in general. Um, so instead of having them memorize all of these poems, there are other poems that we come across that I just kind of use this same method for and having them memorize that poetry. It's really nice because then I can include my own little, you know, diversity of content. I guess you would say, just using this same basic structure. I can't say enough how much I love how they reinforce certain, like, just moral um, character concepts throughout their curriculum. So in this section of poetry, it says read the poem to the child, read it again, have them repeat it, um, then discuss the symbolism in the poem, discuss how a positive attitude can make everything, including learning, more pleasant. Um, again, I just think that there's another example for how they really do a good job teaching you to ha how to approach information and you can use those same things with you know future information that you come across and it's just good to develop that same rhythm when you encounter different pieces of work throughout your day not just in the context of this curriculum so I, I take note of things like that and they are super helpful for me. <laughs> so I do the same thing with the way that they lay out their activities. So in this instance there's a build the word activity using the letters from the yellow letter bank. Um, create four different words. Remember every word must have a vowel. This is everything to me. It just gives me another example of a way that I can um, give them a quick activity to reinforce the information that we're learning. So even though this is here in this sense, in this worksheet form, I can then adapt this to all other things. You know, I can use a completely different set of letters um, and have them do the same thing using the letters that I choose, um, create four different words. To me, this type of stuff, again, is invaluable. Another thing I really love is the artwork that they include. Um, I don't, hmm, how can I say this? I don't necessarily think there is an amazing diversity of artwork. However, I like how they lay out the talking points when they are discussing the artwork. And I think that it is a really good tool to teach us how to address the simplest things in life. What I mean by that is they will cover a painting and they will use different talking points that bring out all these different subjects that you could kind of explore in just one simple observation. So they'll say, um, here, they mentioned one thing we can be grateful for is art. They're talking about a character trait, being grateful, having gratitude for this particular thing. Um, art can bring us joy. Look at the painting on this page. Do you think it would be hard to paint? It was painted by an artist from Russia named, I am not going to attempt the name, <laughs> who spent many years studying and practicing painting. There are so many things that they have uncovered already in just observing the painting. And I think that's something to be said about how we approach everyday things, you know. And, and I do this naturally and, you know, going through this curriculum has helped me to reinforce that same natural behavior that I have and let me know that, like, this is a good thing, you know. So, um, I think I posted a little bit ago on my Instagram account when we took a trip to DC. And when we went to DC, we saw the monument for Abraham Lincoln. And one of the things that we talked about was not just history, but also 
like who in the world is responsible for this sculpture you know how long do you think it took this person to do this thing how much patience do you think they had to have um, just different talking points that you can just pull out of simply observing and appreciating and identifying just I feel like there's again this natural rhythm that they use in building this curriculum that is so beneficial for just learning how to make the most out of all of your learning experiences in homeschool if that makes sense but basically um, those are some of the things or many of the things that I really have enjoyed about this curriculum she has really enjoyed using the curriculum with me it gives us plenty of space to still do our own little creative thing but still have that foundation there it makes it super easy for me to be able to pass off to someone else if I need a little bit of help um, teaching them yeah it's a it's a big thumbs up for me okay the price the PDF format that you can get it in um, yeah I really enjoy it. We really enjoy it. I hope you don't mind these lengthy videos, but I just kind of really wanted to get my point across for how I'm actually realistically using the curriculum. If you have any questions for me, please don't hesitate to leave them in the description box below. Make sure you are subscribed to our channel if you like the content. Thank you guys so much for hanging in there, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.